How do you feel about MAID, MAID, expanding into mental illness and the consequences it'll bring to our society? Okay. So I was pretty sick the last few years. Mm -hmm. And I was in a lot of pain. Uh, it took me usually for about two and a half years. It took me about four hours before I could stand up. And then mm -hmm. once I stood up, <clears throat> I couldn't sit down. I was walking, you know, nine to 12 miles a day. And then by 10 o'clock at night, I was feeling something approximating the worst I'd ever felt previously in my life, but way better than I had in the morning. And then I knew perfectly well that as soon as I went to sleep, it was going to start again. And uh, I put up with that for about two and a half years and got to the point where, especially because I was seeing the pain I was in reflected in the eyes of the people. that I loved, and uh, I didn't want that to happen. And so I talked to my family about going to Switzerland. I thought, I just can't do this for the next 20 years. It didn't look like it was gonna get better. And then, I tried a variety of relatively extreme treatments and possibly one of them worked and I started to recover. And uh, I've been recovering now for about 16 months probably. And it's been slow, but linear. because my son was here playing, and that went very well, and so that was very gratifying. You know, but I'd be a liar if I said that there weren't times where if there would have been a button that would have just shut me off, I would have pushed it. Okay, so now on to medically assisted. We had a dog, Seagull, and uh, near the end of his life, it was getting pretty hard for him to breathe. Every breath became an effort, and so we made the collective decision to have him put down. And uh, we liked that dog quite a lot. He was a great relief to my daughter when she was sick, and so it was a pretty rough day when we had him put down, but it was the right thing to do. But he's a dog. You know, it wasn't grandma. And Nietzsche said, you know, you haven't lived long if you haven't seen that the compassionate hand sometimes kills. And, uh, you know, there's something to that. You gotta ask yourself how much agony you would be willing to watch someone go through before you might give them a hand. But that doesn't mean that that responsibility should be taken up by the government. So, you know, I'm, I'm opposed to capital punishment. And it's not because I don't think that there are crimes worthy of death. In fact, I know perfectly well that there are crimes, there are crimes so egregious that the people who commit them beg for death. That's not an uncommon outcome at sentencing trials for people like the serial sexual slayers of children who've descended far enough down into hell so that death would be a relief. And so, and I think you have to be a fool if you think that 
people, that there are not some crimes that are so brutal that virtually no punishment would be too severe. <laughs> you just don't know anything about those crimes, if that's what you think. But I don't think it's a good idea to give the state that power. Because as untrustworthy as the criminal might be, allowing the state to make decisions about who should live and who should die, you don't know what kind of monster you're likely to conjure up doing that. So I don't know how many of you know this, and you can go look it up for yourself, but before the Nazis started their extermination program, before they started the Holocaust, they started it with the public health campaign. Right? The Nazis came to power partly promising to